All right, back again. So I got the rear end all disassembled and everything is that powder coat right now. So we're gonna start on the front end. Um, I'm gonna start with the Maximum Motorsports caster camber plates. There you go, all brand new. Uh, these are honestly pretty easy to put in. Uh, basically, get the car up, remove your brakes, remove your rotors, then you're gonna unbolt in there. Um, remove your sway bar end links, pull the spring out, remove your shock, and then come up top. You're gonna pull off this nut, remove the factory camber plates, and then you actually use these as a guide to drill the fourth hole for the MM ones, um, which is kind of a pain in the butt to drill through the shock tower. It's pretty thick. Um, but honestly, if you follow the directions for the MM stuff, that's pretty straightforward. Once I do that, we're gonna start into tearing down and out this UPR K member setup to swap it out for the MM stuff. Um, so that will be happening. Um, my front K member is still at the powder coater. They're not done with that yet. So I'm gonna probably have to wait a few days before I can put the K member in. So I might leave the actual K member itself on for a few days until I'm ready to swap it out. I don't like leaving the motor just hanging for a long period of time. So also just notice that low life apparently rubbed through the fender liner. All right, everyone, we were working on getting the front end disassembled and just wanted to show you this. Discovered the front driver side ball joint other than not being able to get it off is bad. So I'm glad I didn't take the car out to autocross quite yet because the ball joint on this side is bad. I haven't looked at the other one yet, um, but we'll see. Awesome. All right, another update. Uh, working on the caster camber plate installs. I will say shout out to Maxima Motorsports. Ta-da, shameless plug. I'm not sponsored, although send me free stuff. Thumb, maybe. Thank you. Anyways. Um, their instructions are really good. So here's their caster camber plate instructions. I have a stack of their instructions. Um, brake lines, K member instructions. They're all really thorough. They have pictures, descriptions. If you follow the directions, everything's pretty straightforward. Um, but I have everything disassembled as far as front suspension minus the K member. I have removed the, um, original caster camber plates. And basically what you got to do is you got to take the old ones and then drill a fourth hole in here. The instructions tell you how to mark it. I'll show you. Um, so that's the next step here. Also, just kind of a random FYI, highly recommend get yourself a baggie of Ziplocs. If you're doing a big project like this, put your bolts in a baggie. Sorry, my handwriting is really bad um, with a fine point sharper Sharpie on a Ziploc, but put your bolts in a Ziploc, mark what they're for, then you won't have to figure out where they go. Um, so those are all my bolts for everything I've done so far. Parts table is getting a little smaller. Here's all the new stuff that's got to go in. But yeah, you basically you don't see you need a you need a fourth hole for these. Now this goes on the underside, but you get the idea. Chugging along. Also, just kind of another side note to get the struts off. front struts you'll notice the nut on the top there is a, a hex like an allen key in the top you're gonna need something to hold that um, what I found works best is I have these little sockets that are hex put that on a ratchet and then you gotta have a big wrench to get the nut off now you could totally take the nut off with everything connected down there still, but it doesn't really work that way because you need to have the strut 
connected still to get the ball joint nut off. So I wouldn't suggest doing that. But just an FYI, um, if you're going to tackle a project that's this intense, you're going to need quite a bit of tools. Um, so far, I've used that. You're going to need a 21 millimeter. You're going to need a 18, a 15. Um, I have an impact gun, which makes life way easier. You're also going to need two 24 millimeter sockets, um, a 21, I want to say a 19. So you, you need a pretty solid set of tools to kind of tackle a project of this size. Um, pry bar, very helpful as far as getting the springs out. You're going to obviously need jacks and stands. I would not suggest tackling this project if you don't have, at the very least, one of those like fancy pack-out boxes from like Craftsman or something that gives you a relatively complete metric tool set. Um, so, just an FYI. All right, so making a fourth hole for the Maximum Motorsports caster camera plates, right? The factories are three-bolt. The Maximum Motorsports are four-bolt. The four-bolt provides you additional strength in the, um, uh, the strut tower, especially if you're going coilovers, you want to do that. I have seen people break the caster camber plates with the three bolt ones you can get from some of the other companies. So you have these three holes, right? Basically the maximum motorsports instructions outline this, but it took me a little bit of reading through a few times to understand what they meant to do. So really your original plate is going to be like that, right? What you're going to do, you're going to take the plate, you're going to flip it 180 degrees. So you're going to spin it that way. Right? So now what you're going to do, you're going to take these two bolt holes. You're going to line it up with the edge on that one. Line this one up with the edge. There you go. Something along those lines. And then you're going to mark... I already did that, where that is, draw a circle inside. And then you're going to take these, you're going to move it down to the bottom half of the adjustment in the slot, line that up, line that up, you're going to draw second hole. You can see I did that there. Once you do that, take that off, you're going to have an intersection of the two holes. Once you intersect those, get the middle, take a center punch, punch there, that's going to be your drilling point. Um, so hopefully that's helpful to some people as far as installing those. So the next step is to drill these out. The instructions give you on how what size to drill them out and everything. Um, these strut towers are pretty thick metal, so it's not very fun to try and drill them out. Unfortunately, um, it's probably going to take you a little while. You might need some cutting oil if you have some. Um, I'm not going to video that, but I'll, I'll work through that and then go from there. Ta-da. Fourth hole. Um, I did have to open this one up just a little. I feel like my hole was just a smidge off, but also the, um, it's hard to see. There's a little bit of overlap between the sheet metal, between the middle and bottom piece. So I think that might just be kind of a manufacturing defect thing, but you then... Make sure these fit. Ta-da! And you can start assembling your CC plates. So once you have the um, lower plate piece bolted up, um, it's pretty impossible to mess up as long as you follow the directions. Make, just make sure you got the right one on the right side, which there's a picture of. Um, there's a little washer that goes underneath there. And then a washer and a nut. That bolts the plate that's underneath the strut tower to this top piece, which is going to adjust your um, caster camber, your fore aft. Um, and then there, you'll notice that there's another set of studs for your bearing plates. Now, I see this get messed up all the time. Let's see if I can get more light here. Um, you have two options with these, right? They're labeled driver and passenger side in the bags for the standard orientation. However, if you look at the directions, they can go on either side. What you're going to notice, one side is kind of notched out, and then the other side 
has a little bit more beef to it. So the reason these can go on either side is do you want more or less negative camber adjustment, right? These are going to be your caster camber. Do you want it this way where you have more adjustment in the negative or more adjustment in the positive? So you can flip these around, right? They fit on either side. What you're going to notice, this one runs out of adjustment that way, has more adjustment that way. So if you read the directions, you go one of two ways. If you put them in the outboard direction, it's going to give you one and a f point one and five eighths negative degrees to a quarter degree negative on a two inch lowered car. So for most people, you're going to want them that way, meaning this direction, meaning just wanted to double check. So yeah, that plate, you're going to have this side here and the side with more beef to it on the inside. If you follow the directions, driver's side goes like that. However, for me, since I want to set this car up with some negative camber, I'm going to flip them, right? I want the inboard direction. Inboard direction, if I'm winding this up to the directions, this piece is going to be there. This bump out is going to be on the inside. So I'm going to put mine this way. Ta-da. What that's going to do, is that's going to give me more negative adjustment, right? So you can flip these around either way. If you end up getting your plates where they're, you can't get enough adjustment in the positive or the negative orientation, you probably have them flip the wrong direction. So just pay attention to the directions. Like you said, here if we look at the inboard, which is how I'm setting them up like this, that's going to give me three and a quarter negative to one and five eighths negative camber. What you're going to notice is that will not allow you to get positive camber or close to um, stock, you know, factory alignment specs. So if you want factory alignment specs, you're going to want them this way, right? I believe um, the factory is one or a half degree negative camber or something like that. So you're going to want it like this, right? Where I can push it more outboard. On the other end of the spectrum, it goes less that way. I'm going to do this. Gives me more adjustment in, less adjustment that way. So once you put these on, all you got to do is um, take some of the washers and some of the nuts and just nut these on, and then bam, you are done. You just got to reinstall your strut. I'm going to do that later once I get the K-member in, um, so I'll show you the final product. All right, there you go, install. So um, basically, you pretty much just follow the directions. Um, like I said, make sure you put the top bearing plate on in the right direction for what you're hoping to achieve um, with the car. And um, yeah, that's it. So when you get able to get an alignment, you're probably going to want to take it to a shop that knows what they're doing. But basically, these four are your on your bottom plate or your caster camber, or your caster, I'm sorry, and these are your camber. Um, so they give you specs and the instructions on what to set it up to. You can align it however you want. My last car, I had negative two and a half camber in the front. I'm going to probably replicate that or somewhere in that vicinity. Um, but yeah, that's it. Wrap this one up. We're going to move on to the next part of the project.